खाता हूं न खाने दूंगा कौन कहता है भ्रष्टाचार करने की जरूरत होती है भाइयों बहनों मेरा मंत्र है न खाता हूं न खाने दूंगा और इसलिए भाइयों बहनों मुझे मुझे यहां विकास करना है मुझे यहां शिक्षा की चिंता करनी है मुझे यहां किसानों को पानी पहुंचाना है मुझे यहां किसानों को उनकी फसल पर पूरी कीमत मिले इसका प्रबंध करना है मुझे नौजवानों को रोजगार देना है मुझे माताओं बहनों को सम्मान देना है नमस्ते सुस्वागतम एंड वेलकम फ्रेंड्स ऑन आ विराट हिंदुस्तान संगम सोशल मीडिया चैनल्स वी आर ऑन एपिसोड नंबर 227 एंड टुडे वी विल बी डिस्कसिंग द इलेक्ट्रल बॉन्ड्स ऑन आर ज्ञान गंगा वर्ड्स ऑफ विजडम विद डॉक्टर सुब्रमण्यम स्वामी जर्नलिस्ट जे गोपी कृष्णन हु इज बेस्ड इन दिल्ली एंड हु हैज बीन इन द फोरफ्रंट एक्सपोजिंग न्यूमरस स्कैंडल्स इन द पास्ट and especially of 2g and other scandals he will give his insight and we also have with us our team member tk swaminathan from chennai who is a chartered accountant who will give us a vivid presentation of what the electoral bonds scam is all about and with this words it is over to dr subramaniam swami to start this discussion on these electoral bond and what it means what, where it is heading what will happen and everything behind it dr swami then we'll have swami nathan and then gopi krishna <coughs> dr swami again and the entire team will be discussing in the next 45 minutes to an hour over to dr swami uh thank you jagdish now this uh scam by all scam the definition of scam i think uh, our swami lion would uh, you know give it more accurately uh, the, the scam is been unprecedented because of the amount of money that was siphoned off by various parties but more most importantly overwhelmingly by the bjp which was supposed to stand for fighting corruption and things like that so it's been a big blow for the bjp at the moment still people are groping with the whether you know there is some uh, uh, some way out or what uh, they are not very sure but there is going to be a issue which is going to be 
uh, not only in the elections, but I think it will be like uh, Watergate in America or it will be like some of the scandals we have had, the 2G scam and then before that uh, the purchase of weapons uh, during Rajiv Gandhi's time. So uh, we, have, so we are starting it in the very uh, early stages. Um, the first uh, fraud that was committed on uh, on the on the Indian public is when this uh, electoral bonds uh, was introduced in Parliament only the Lok Sabha saying this is the money bill, so it will not go to the Rajya Sabha. Uh, only uh, you know money bills don't go to Rajya Sabha; they, you know, it's only in the, remains in the Lok Sabha, and Rajya Sabha at that time they did not have majority. And so it couldn't have got it through. So therefore, uh, the uh, uh, this it began this way. Now, uh, having come this far, now uh, the Supreme Court has done a great uh, job so far. I hope uh, the Supreme Court continues with this uh, heat that they are generating, uh, which is uh, lighting fires in the pants of many people. And so today, what I'm asking, uh, I'm, I'm, I'm going to do is because we have got two experts. One, uh, Mr. Uh, the great Mr. Goind, uh, excuse me, uh, our uh, Gopi Krishnan, who uh, was my teammate in uh, 2G, even my teammate in uh, Airsel Maxis and so many other scams. Uh, he, I usually got the newspaper credit. Uh, but in the knowing people who know, uh, they all know that it is the brains of uh, Gopi Krishnan, which uh, which produced all these things to a, a kind of a finality. Now I think I uh, would uh, like to say to Gopi Krishnan, get ready, you are again, <laughs> you are again with us on this uh, to take it forward. We are not going to let it go. At the moment, there are others who are who have been saying that they are going to take it up in court uh, again, go back to this Supreme Court for further investigation. But uh, we will wait and watch that. The second we have is a chartered accountant who is also part of the VHS, and that is we we call him uh, Swami Lion because he is a lion, but otherwise he is known as Swami Nathan, and he is uh, going to give us our expert opinion. And so I think I would reserve my view uh, towards the end. Let me first hear, let us first hear these two, and uh, know know the technical aspects of it. Only thing I would say in the conclusion is that the donors stretch out across uh, thirty-two different sectors of India in terms of uh, payment. Now this is an enormous, enormous uh, fraud that has been committed on the nation. And we want to know who are the culprits. And so over to uh, first Gopi uh, Krishnan and then to Swami Lai. Gopi Krishnan. Thank you, sir. Uh, thank you, Dr. Swami. After a long time, um, it's my pleasure to be uh, with you in a uh, academic debate on this subject. And uh, one more, uh, I'm happy to have our chartered accountant, Swami Nathan. Uh, who is always in behind the scenes has come out in open with all data because data is with him. I always call him for any related matters. And frankly, sir, this election bond, this electoral bond was why government, uh, why BJP government brought it because it was Arun Jaitley's late finance minister Arun Jaitley's brainchild, and I really don't know why he brought this. Those days he used to tell us and he even said in the parliament in the parliament, the contributors feel awkward or they want the anonymity and they don't want to know other political party or opponent should know who, how much they gave the money to the other rivals and others. So we want and they want an anonymity. I think some industrialists might have given a bad idea, sold bad idea to Arun Jaitley. Because the, till that time, election rule is uh, about 20,000. 
everything has to be declared. So below 20,000 donor's name, you don't need to declare above 20,000. But there also, political parties and the donors, that's the Indian Juga. We, uh, they will come with all big, big companies like Tata Reliance, Airtel come through the trusts. Some charity trusts and electoral trusts. They did it. We have a Nira Radia take. In 2009, Mamta Banerjee released a conversation of Ratan Tata's companies to fund communist parties in West Bengal. Because communist parties, Ratan Tata wanted to uh, stop the surge of Trinamool Congress. So that time, they released a lot of documents, how much money fund was given by Ratan Tata in West Bengal. So that time, there was a dialogue between Niraradia and Tata's secretary Venkat. They say, we have a formula. We will give two installments to all political parties. Before election, we will give the first installment. Second installment will be after the winning number of MPs and MLS. And Ratan Tata's secretary tells Nira Radhi, every political party, including Madam Sonia Gandhi, agreed to this. Only two parties did not agree. So we were forced to give them full amount. One is Communist Party and another is Maya, which is BSP. Now in the electoral bonds also, we will come to know no Mayavadi. No Mayavadi. Communist parties already declared they won't act. They are against the electoral bonds and they went to Supreme Court against the electoral bonds. They did not accept it. it. Mayavadi also did not accept no electoral bond. When you correlate with her radio types, so she wanted everything full in some other way. And in the electoral bond, now the list has come. There is no Ratan Tata. No Tata companies. No Tata companies in this thing. That Niraradia takes also. Ratan Tata is telling the trust, the, telling Radia, we have our people. Our trust man will say he has no association with us. It, so we have to make a statement from our electoral trust. We or our you know, Tata company has some no association with this trust. Ratan Tata is the highest payer of this thing. And now in this electoral fund, Mukesh Ambani's company's name is also not there. But there is a company, Cube Supply Chain. Am I right, Swami Nathan? Cube Supply Chain. They are the third largest donor. And uh, there are some directors of Reliance. Also donors list is there, Mukesh. Reliance list is there. And uh, the highest donor is none other than Santiago Martin. Yeah. Uh, now he has given 1,300 crore and to the highest uh, receiver is DMK 559 crore. It's a, he is running all kinds of illegal lotteries in the Tamil Nadu, Kerala using Northeast license. All his even though he is operating in Kerala and Tamil Nadu, his companies are registered basically in Northeast, and he is representing Northeast governments, which is most corrupt. And he got the lottery license. He will collect and he will give 10 to 15 percent to the government and trust. He and the uh, parties in running will share the loot. That's why thousand crore, thousand three hundred crores he has given his companies. And another thing is. This electoral bond, what government did was a total wrong. Earlier, the companies with 7 percentage net companies having profit can give up to 7 percentage of their profit. But this through this money bill, government has changed it. Now, lot of companies who is not having profit or who is having less profit is giving such a huge donation, 10, 20, 30 per, uh, percentage of their, 30 times of their so-called profit, so many shell companies. So why the Modi government, which wanted to, who batted for the need of transparency and of corruption, come out with these electoral bonds, which itself has created a lot of 
uh, secret money, secret hidden operations through companies and secrecy of the donors. I really don't know why we are talking about the secrecy of the donors. Why it comes, otherwise secrecy of the donors was not possible if it is about 20,000. And, and the political parties will work and uh, the, the corporate donors will come through some press. They will give hard cash. Dr. Swami, you are in politics for uh, how much? 50, more than 60. You know how the political things come. You have told us so much how the bad money is passed through and this and that. And our Jagdish Ji was also there. And uh, yes. I mean, uh, all this back cash, Motilal Vora kind of system operations were happening. And why it was electoral funds came? And look at the sir, I have a I'm just asking. I am curious. Uh, BJP is now having 8,000 crore, highest. BJP yeah. is having around uh, 15 governments and across India, central government rule. They got 8,000 crore. But Mamta Banerjee's party, TMC, only having one stage, is having the number two party. One, so they got 1,300 crore. Congress having four or five governments during this area, they got one, so they also got 1,300 crore below community, below uh, Mamta's party. Then DMK is having 600 crore with a single state. And BRS, uh, why, why are uh, this uh, Jagat's party and Andhra based parties are also there. But the and NCP is very less. <laughs> Bombay, India's uh, Sharad Power controlled party got very well less funding compared to others is a laughable thing. And Samajwadi party just few crores. That's also a laughable thing. RJD's numbers are also not seen. Mayavati's no numbers. So this was a total intransparent way electoral fund. Basically it started by uh, coming through parliament as a money bill. That itself is arrogance of the government. Government should not have done that uh, by changing the provisions of the company law, by changing the provisions of Electoral Representation Act and Election Commission rules and guidelines and changing income tax rules also by the simple... Why the why government? Who pushed this idea? Who sold this idea to Arun Jaitley? I don't know. He was always telling us, ye, um, uh, ye donors have a problem. They want anonymity. They don't want to know how much they give to a particular party to be known to other parties. So they isko koi dikkat nahi chahiye. So but now the Supreme Court has banned, scrapped everything. Now I leave to you, sir. What is uh, you tell us why they kept it as a money bill? Yeah. <laughs> okay, shall I? Uh... I ask uh, Swami Nathan to uh, take over uh, and then we will all uh, have a mutual discussion with the three of us. Yes, go ahead. Swami, we can't hear you. Swami, something's wrong with your mic. Swami Nathan. Yeah, can you hear me now? Yeah, yeah, good. Yeah, got it. Thank you, uh, Dr. Swami and VHS family for having me. I'll straight away jump into that. <clears throat> uh, since the uh, no, uh, topic started with money bill, I'll just straight jump into that. Uh, Gopiji and rest of the viewers, if you look at the background on which electoral bonds was introduced, it was introduced in 2017, just after some time about uh, demonetization and when the topic of GST was looming around the corner. That was the time when, you know, electoral bonds was pushed through as a money bill. Now, as a money bill, as I understand, it's going via uh, Article 110 of the Indian Constitution. But Supreme Court in this electoral bond judgment has categorically said that they are not going to address this issue in this judgment. It is being considered an, another judge in a seven judge bench of Roger Matthew case, which is being examined right now. But having said that, my cursory reading of Article 110 of the Indian Constitution, which is 
you know, in the screen. So what does a money bill say is that it's imposition, abolition, remission, alteration and regulation of any tax. As far as I can understand, electoral bonds is not a tax. It's a kind of voluntary donation that is being called for. So it doesn't fit into the criteria of money bill at all. And going to the another limb of B is relating to consolidated funds and amendment of the law with the financial obligation undertaken by the government of India and things like it. Electoral bonds doesn't fit in either. And then the custody of the consolidated fund or the contingency fund of India, the payment of the monies into and withdrawal of monies from such fund. Electoral bonds doesn't fit in here either. Then the appropriation of monies out of the consolidation fund of India. Now, so if you can see the other limbs, I don't know, uh, electoral bonds doesn't fit into any of the schemes as outlined in Article 110 of the Constitution to you know uh, navigate it as a money bill. Nevertheless, you know, uh, what we can understand by this scheme is government of India of the day, right, is competent enough to illegally design a law and challenging litigants to approach Supreme Court. It's a challenge on the rest of the public so that they can go to court and challenge if it is a money bill or not. Otherwise, if they are well competent enough to know that it doesn't fill out any of the criteria of the money bill. Uh, just to start a discussion around that money bill. And then having the scheme floated through, uh, much of my data is taken from Supreme Court judgment. But if you see an interesting part, RBI and Election Commission stood their ground and opposed it tooth and nail. Okay. As far as the scheme operates, it's going to be a, like a, a promissory note, not exactly a promissory note because it doesn't have a bearer name. So just to give you an explanation, suppose uh, Mr. X, he goes to the bank and on a particular day, a bond is released. There is a window happening of uh, four times a year. So he just goes there and pays the money and gives his KYC documents. That is the first purchaser. The bank sees his KYC and gives a electoral bonds to him. That's the first leg of the transaction. Then the purchaser of the bond either directly approaches a party or through third party, whatever happens, he gives a details of the bond purchase to the political party. And then political party goes to the bank and deposits in their account. And then it is being cross verified with a unique alpha numeric number and then the amount gets credited to the political party accounts. That's the scheme that has happened so far. Now, the issue that's happening right now is SBI so far has not shared the unique number for them to verify who has purchased the bond and who has encashed it. That's the matter for debate which the SC is going to hear tomorrow. But as a common person, we find it too silly to not to give these details because anyhow, buy and selling has to be matched. Now, having said that, what are the, let us look into what RBI and EC has subjected to. RBI has subjected to the scheme stating that the bonds could change hands after they have been issued by the bank. Therefore, there is no check for the same as the purchaser who has completed the KYC, whose identity is thereupon completely concealed, may not be the actual contributor or donor. So therefore, anybody can appoint a proxy as a KYC who can go and purchase the bond and give it to political parties. You will never know the, who is the real donor of the party. And therefore, not only that, the real donor trail is completely erased in the process. And RBA has also forewarned that electoral bonds in the form of script could expose a risk of forgery and cross-border countership is also possible. These warnings by RBA has been completely ignored by the government. And more importantly, RBA tried to protect its territory by saying that, you know, it's issue allowing any other bank to issue electoral bond would challenge RBA's sole authority for issuing bearer instruments, which has the potential of becoming currency. Again, this was ignored. So these were the valid points which put across by RBA, but government to its credit replied to RBA or at least stated that RBA is not in a position to understand electoral bonds. That was a reply given to RBA state in there and therefore they need much more education around that. An election commission to state that, you know, uh, making an amendment to uh, representation of people like to state that it's a retrograde step as far as transparency of donation is concerned and this provision needs to be withdrawn. That was the state of election commission. And most importantly, RBA and election commission joined hands to say that there is a possibility of shell companies being set up who can misuse the bearer bombs for money laundering transactions. Okay. 
in addition to electoral commission we have affidavit uh, i think election commission is affidavit said that so there is also a possibility that a foreign funding mm -hmm. can happen because foreign subsidiaries which are set up operations in india is also allowed to purchase bonds therefore there is a possibility that foreign interference may happen these were the concerns raised by rbi in an election commission but unfortunately it got ignored Now, having now that Supreme Court has ruled that electoral bonds amendment, whatever has been proposed, is violative of Article 19, bracket one, bracket A. Let us look into what are the amendments that was passed. The representation, the representation of People Act was amended to state that exempted political parties were exempted from publishing the details of the contributions received from electoral bond. Normally, a political party is expected to, you know. to publish those details but the act was amended making them not to publish these details and then financial act and income tax act both were amended to state that the political parties need not have a record of contributions to electoral bonds as well so they don't have the and no information has to be disclosed in the transaction of electoral bonds and then coming to the point which gopiji has you know uh, mentioned earlier the companies act the companies act were amended to state that they removed any obligations to maintain the details about bonds contributed to political parties including its political affiliation this was not possible in the case of electoral trust whereas if you purchase electoral bond you are not under obligation to maintain any details and most importantly earlier only a profit making company after 3 years of profit making to subject to some limit 7% or 7.5% can contribute now the companies act amended to state that even a loss making entities can contribute to electoral bonds or purchase electoral bonds in other words a company can make loss by purchasing the bonds also <laughs> it's allowed <laughs> so these were the amendments which was nullified by supreme court but suffice to say that every route has been studied in advance and navigated to ensure that there is no disclosure happening and there is no record getting into the system at all they want to retain the anonymity across all the platforms across all the apps now there is a chance of being quid pro quo that is being discussed so far it's not been proved but we can easily map the dates which many you know media portals are doing including newspapers in terms of what is going to happen but suffice to say this the huge corporate contributions channelized to electoral bonds are clearly not acts of philanthropy nor corporate social responsibility that much is clear the scheme constituted a major conduit for consolidating and reinforcing corporate nexus with the ruling dispensation this ruling dispensation could be state or central it's a different matter but the fact remains that there is a nexus Now, coming to the point the overall spending limit for candidates is we have 543 lok sabha constituencies we have 95 lakhs upper limit per candidate as per eca which will ball per comes to 515 crores we have 4123 assembly constituencies across india and the limit is 40 per lakh put together you only need 2165 crores of money as far as electoral bonds is concerned but what we have collected is close to 16500 crores which means the electoral bonds is not exactly for electoral expenses it's eight times more it's for something else which we need to find out so uh, these are all pretty much which has come up so far from the you know uh, judgment of supreme court and as uh, dr swami and gopi krishnan said much remains to be seen going forward in days to come especially from tomorrow as soon as when the sba is going to disclose the alpha numerical code we should be in a position to match these numbers with the company who has purchased that will be even more clarity and then we map it with if at all any policy changes has happened with the central or state government subsequent to the dates or any raid has happened or not happened whether it is for that or not doubt could pack up we still need to investigate but at this point of time this is the information which we have from the court judgment and other articles on thank you for it and gopi ji just to say that tmc i understand from the reading it's a national party not a state party but it is uh, but it is only in the uh, uh, one uh, state and they collected 4300 crore and yes. the bjp with uh, whole 20 uh, whole country and around 15 16 states they are come only 8000 now i will make a small thing this election commission always this 
maximum figure of a per constituency 95 lakh can all just bunk up. In, in general, per parliament 95 lakh only and the, they will uh, these candidates and I am not saying I'm, I let, let it be don't take it negatively. We have good chartered accountants like you to give you so much bigger <laughs> has to be filed than others. That 95 lakhs. But actual 10 crore is the minimum need per constituency for major candidates. And uh, this electoral bond, actually it has to be, this is just allowing only parties to take, not the candidates. This electoral bond is happening. Uh, it is now uh, uh, during the election time, finance ministry opens the window. Uh, SBI it is there. Uh, such and such days, the electoral bonds will be allowed from the SBI's designated branches, and only the registered parties who are having uh, accounts in the proper way has to can be taken. And um, I really don't know why uh, who sold this idea of electoral bonds, and which says there should be anonymity. Then what is the need of democracy and transparency? And um, why the parties, uh, otherwise also, earlier rules are also 20,000 above is there, you have to declare, but they come through trust, they come through some other back cash and others. But why this electoral board system and that to come with a money bill changing the Companies Act, well, there was government was misguided or uh, then finance minister, somebody sold a uh, cock and bull story and he called for it, otherwise he purposefully called for it, I, I don't know. Such a foolish thing. And it is a slap on the government when the parliament, as Dukri got fascists it. And then the government goes through SBI telling uh, all these things and get it delayed for three months and SBI says 24 months. Tomorrow SBI is getting slapped from the court for delaying uh, not giving entire things uh, properly, uh, so you cannot find the donor how much money, numbers, and others with help. So, SBI, why SBI was supposed to act? SBI means finance ministry. Why they were forced to do this, uh, become jokers before the people of the country? We don't know. I just have to. Uh, Gopiji, to answer your question, uh, finance minister, then finance minister, in his speech, uh, budget speech of uh, 2017, para 165 has said that the reasoning for this. Donors have also expressed reluctance in donating by check or other transparent methods as it would disclose their identity and entail adverse consequences. This was the reason given for Prime of AC, a reason given for introduction of electoral bonds. And donors, donors expressed to finance minister. <laughs> that itself is a laughable thing. He has not contested any elections, only after he lost it also. No, I feel uh, uh, Gopi Krishnan and our Swami Nathan are uh, uh, squibbling over how much TMC should have got and how much the BJP should have got. I think. All three of you, that is Dr. Swami, the Gopi Krishnan, and Swami Nathan, and the Supreme Court are very uncharitable towards the ex finance minister and the prime minister. In fact, you all have not helped Modi Sarkar or Modi ji to fulfill his election promise. He had promised 15 lakh rupees to each citizen. Now, that 15 lakh. He calculated and it was to come to these political parties, these crooks, all the political parties. So your the Supreme Court has come in the way and stopped the transfer of 15 lakh rupees that which kid he had promised to these political parties. He forgot the citizen, it was to come to the political parties, and the political parties would spend it on the people. Ultimately, the people would get it. So Gopi Krishnan, Dr. Swami and Swaminathan and the Supreme Court and the petitioners have been very uncharitable to Narendra Modi and the ex-finance minister and making this statement. Some more funds could have come in. Then this thing, could have, people would have got the money just as they said there was 
zero loss in the 2G scam. People said we are getting cheap mobile tariffs. So the same way people would have got this 15 lakhs to the political parties. Ultimately, the money comes back to the people. It is distributed during the election. So you all are very uncharitable, I feel. You all have blocked Modi Sarkar's plan. I won't eat it, I won't All this you all are creating obstruction. No, sir. Actually, money giving to people only in Tamil Nadu. What will sir daily give up? Money on given money. Uh, there is muscle power is there. But anyway, Jagdishi, what you said, Abhisha has given a uh, jumla hota hai. Go election mein, he will speak like this. And so please <laughs> jumla. At least I had a hope of getting 15 lakh rupees as promised by Mr. Modi. Now that Supreme Court has come in the way. It is yeah, until now. Yeah. Supreme Court has uh, made the government of India, State Bank of India's party. By your statement, you are making entire citizens of India is also party to this. <laughs> but I am the loser. He, is a, I did not get he it. was just joking. He, he was just being sarcastic. Sarcastic. Sir. sarcastic. Uh, sir, I have a question to all the panelists. 30 seconds. 30 seconds. 30 seconds. 30 seconds. All right, all right, all right. 30 seconds. So, uh, Jack, uh, I mean, for all the people who are seeing, the data we have seen so far today, Dr. Swami, is only from April 2019. There is one year extra, one and a half years extra worth of data that we don't know. But according to some RTA, that's worth about 5,800 crores to BJP. I mean, I'm just leave that aside. We don't I mean we let's ascertain when those facts come out because we don't know the data that we got. And yeah. anecdotally, Dr. Swami, since I've mentioned before 2018, I want to show you something on the screen. Okay, just yes. it's more anecdotal. BJP being yeah. a very brilliant party, extremely uh -huh. futuristic. Uh, they are, uh, I don't know what they, how they... Oh, have. it seems to be the, the typist of BJP made a... Oh, yeah, yeah, it's <laughs> just a 12,000 crore. It is just only, tell uh, you know, 12,000 crore mistake, I think. That's fine. 12 crore mistake, sorry. Uh, Dr. Swami, no, no. BJP has said that they got a bond on 4th April, but the bond was dated on 5th April. <laughs> <laughs> Unless they time they travel, do I don't know how they do this. I mean, this is very unique to BJP. But if, if we say this, then it is a typing mistake. We accept then even Sonia Gandhi can also be considered a typing mistake. No, Gopi. That way, the, yeah, yeah. what I'm saying is but, this is a declaration given by the party to the ACI yeah. and the Supreme Court. And they should be careful by these things. Whether it is a mistake, not a mistake, we don't know. For all you know, I am <laughs> saying that they already knew that this guy is going to give me 12 crores tomorrow. So I put it today. <laughs> but I think more I'm anecdotal. Thinking, I'm, Another thing, thing is, you have not declared the Donald's name. Yeah, but good that DMK and Devagoda's Janta declared the names. I think everybody should start declaring the names. Everybody so should start declaring the names. Yeah. We should know. They should know. And Dr. Sam, I have only one question to you specifically. Given that these companies have given uh, so much a party, that name has been disclosed. What are the chances that the shareholders of these companies sue the gov sue these companies or have an issue with the companies that's a question you can answer later arvind ji aap le sakte aap hindi mein Adha, no, no. Uh, let me take the clue from what ramesh said just now uh, these companies ramesh most of them except some mm. of them uh, which are larger companies most of them are one man companies these yeah. are shell companies which have given madanlal limited has given thousands of crores uh, but, i mean these companies are basically uh, the, the shell companies these companies have collected some other donors whose name has not come out. Everybody was saying there are hum do hamare do. In this country, there are hum do hamare do. Do se kharid rahe, do ko bech rahe. Now, where are there these two people? Gopi Krishnan has mentioned, which is now public knowledge about quick, quick supply chain company, which is a Benami company or a shell company. Reliance. Reliance. That is Mukesh Ambani. But yeah. what about others? And how Mukesh Ambani, whether in the, the books of Mukesh Ambani's companies, the money has been given to quick supply chain to be given yeah. to BJP or any other party for that matter. Because and the some, party and some of Ambani directors are also donors. Some of the and now the question for shareholders was that whether the Reliance Company shareholders have given per permission to anybody in the Reliance Company to give money to quick supply chain so that the money can be given to a political party yeah, in the form of electoral bonds. That is one question. I have seen Janta Dal's declaration. 
big profit making companies infosys giving devagoda 1 crore or something or 2 crore not only that, that is, the question that is, is this new this uh, table is in circulation that this company called gaming whatever the the, the santiago martins company yeah, this yeah. company had made a profit of 200 crores but paying 1300 paying crores 1400 crores that means a company which is making a profit of 200 crores where from they are paying the 1400 crores and where are they the, the i mean this is not a business and i'll tell i'll tell one thing about this martin santiago martin and study ऑपरेशन फॉर थ्री थ्री फाइनेंशियल Uh, where was the uh, corporate uh, ministry uh, what were, what they were doing i mean that means Arvind one ji. hand the government did not know what the other hand is doing say in the nutshell arvind ji arvind ji ek minute ek minute arvind ji please arvind ji ek minute please gopi you're going to talk about martin finish that arvind ji aap se ek request hai ki aap hindi pe baat kijiye kyunki bahut sare log hindi pe sunna chahte hain zarur zarur ha in the nutshell sawal sawal puch lo dr swami se short term short question लॉन्ग टर्म क्वेश्चन अलग है मेरा शॉर्ट टर्म क्वेश्चन ये है कि अब चुनाव का कार्यक्रम घोषित कर दिया गया है चुनाव आयोग ने कर दिया है अभी पूरी सुनवाई उच्चतम न्यायालय में इस मामले की नहीं हुई है कल भी सुनवाई जारी रहेगी आगे भी जारी रहेगी स्टेट बैंक के जो कर्मचारी हैं उन्होंने बताया कि चेयरमैन ने गलती करके ये डेट मांगी एक दिन का समय मांगा है अब डॉक्टर स्वामी कृपया ये हमारे व्यूअर्स को बताए कि इसका कोई चुनाव पे कोई लेना देना है क्या क्या चुनाव पे कोई असर होने वाला है क्या इसका नहीं उधर पब्लिक फैसला करनी है आखिर में ये जो हुआ है ये तो साफ साफ घोटाला है ये एक इस जिसको कहते हैं इंग्लिश में स्कैंडल इसी तो मैं ये कह रहा हूं कि आज ये जारी रहे ना रहे परंतु सवाल है कि एक्शन कौन लेगा सारा हो जा तो सुप्रीम कोर्ट पर लग रही है हाँ। सुप्रीम कोर्ट फैसला दे सकती है परंतु क्या जाकर एफ आई आर नहीं फाइल कर सकती है तो इसमें हमको भी सोचना है कि जैसे हमने टू जी में किया जैसे हमने एयरसेल मैक्सिस में किया कई अवधों में किया नेशनल हेरल्ड में किया मुझे लगता है कि हम जो यहाँ बैठे हैं हम ही को जाकर एफ आई फाइल करना पड़ेगा या एक पीआईएल डालना पड़ेगा नहीं तो इसमें ये ये सारा चले जाएगा वैसे ही मैं और ये भी कहूँगा कि जिन जिन लोगों ने दिया है उनको हम कम उनके ऊपर जिम्मेदारी रखें जो सरकार ऐसा करना नहीं चाहिए था उल्टा वो पकड़ना चाहिए था जो चोरी करते हैं उन्होंने ही ये, ये इस प्रकार से आ, क्या कहें चार सौ बीसी की और आ, उन्होंने ये पैसा लिया है तो और ये मैं समझता हूँ पब्लिक उनके बारे सोचना चाहिए और इलेक्शन में वो, वो एक महत्वपूर्ण इश्यू बनेगा जरूर मैं मुझे पूरा विश्वास है ओके okay, गोपी See, this is basically shows the non-democratic nature of the people running the country. First, you hmm. come out with a non-democratic item, non-transparent item, electoral bond, which says, uh, uh, "I'm sad." The, the parties who fought against the Congress party's corruption and talked too much, "Nee gaunga, khane nee dunga," but you allowed everybody to come and. Let, let us come to the this uh, few lottery company, the future, the highest one thousand three hundred, ha, a few five hundred or more half figures gone to DMK. I know this Martin very well. Martin was operating in Tamil Nadu and Kerala, using his northeast registrations in Sikkim and Nagaland lotteries, where he was bribing everybody 
and he collects the huge lottery cash and gave some 10 percent to government rest for 45 45 or he must be taking 30 and others he was martin was a worker in myanmar worker was in myanmar and he was uh, uh, once he picked the fight with karnanathi uh, because his daughter has uh, once created a, a movie about him with hundreds of crows and uh, then so he his works were not happened when karnanathi was coming in wheelchair martin just went and asked this thing that annoyed karnanathi he just looked at dgp and martin was pissed away martin was in jail that martin was seen in kerala's communist party donor and when it came communist party gave back some two three crores something but this is why i always say bribe givers are the same politician sages when bjp came martin's son joined in bjp in join bjp headquarters delhi when tamil nadu unit opposed so ram madhav brought him ram madhav brought him uh, making him as a jammu kashmir tamil martin's son as a jammu kashmir unit bjp member and he did it now i saw recently he has been coming with some society and uh, meeting finance ministers uh, some uh, delegation and others so the corrupt fellows are this thing this is a non transparent item and i am just laughing on this electoral bond uh, though the government uh, claimed that they will bring for election transparency and others then where are the major players ratan taka is the should have been the highest player looking at the companies and the profits here then it should have been Ambani, Mukesh Ambani's companies. And where is Adani's companies? <laughs> Adani is supposed to be the highest beneficiary wherever the government, so in the Modi government also. Uh, Adani was the highest beneficiary in getting airports and uh, uh, seaports and the roads and construction. But there is no Adani company we have been seeing in the Zero Mega engineering. Mega no? engineering. No, Mega no, is, uh, Mega, yes, sir. Mega is basically a Telugu based company. It's, okay. it's a Hyderabad based. Hyderabad, Hyderabad based. Uh, Adani has some construction, some projects may, he may be, you can call as a uh, subsidiary. And these are all the company. Mecca is not a big company, but uh, now they are immersed in the highway. I have a uh, national highway proper preparation, others construction infrastructure. It's a working company on profit. But uh, then where is the money? LNT is not paying any money. Electro fund. Why LNT kind of companies? Because Telepro, if Mega is paying this much, what should have been the uh, LNT's uh, payment to the political parties? Why it is so? Because the uh, electoral bonds, he was itself is a decision. Why you are keeping in uh, uh, Donald's name cannot be there? This number has to end. Uh, the worst is after, even after Supreme Court, this thing, tomorrow Supreme Court is going to screw SBI for not giving the number. Why you are holding this? Why BJP government, uh, central government led by BJP is holding? Uh, look at the other players. Second is TMC, second receiver, second is um, uh, BJP has received only 40% of your 45% of total collection. 65% is to the opposition parties. Why BJP is holding this? Why BJP don't allow state bank of india to give the donors list it's a, just a computer work this uh, this is the donor number this is the donor's name and this was encashed by such and such party that's enough and you can no, give a time okay why bjp why not all other political parties sabhi political party ko chahiye ki ab jinhone jinhone paisa liya hai wo ghoshit kare ki unko paisa kis number se mila unique number he, who told SBI chairman to file all these nonsense applications, hide and seek game in the court, not the opposition parties, it's the ruling party. Why they did it? They got only 45% and there is no, this receiving Those political parties which are accusing BJP, they should also come forward. They should not only accuse BJP for accusing it, they should also come forward voluntarily, they should disclose that these are the unique numbers from where they have got the money. Uh, two Arvind, they are doing. Numbers. Two parties have already done it. Huh? Two parties have already done yeah, it. So yeah, yeah. yeah, so all parties should do it. I mean, if BJP is not doing it. 
Yeah, I think uh, Srinivas Swaminathan wants to say something. Yes, you had your hand up. <laughs> Again, Swami, we had audio is bad. Audio is bad. Okay. Can you hear me now? Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay. Uh, if you are not able to find a big corporate name in electoral bonds, then maybe you can find their name as part of electoral trust. Okay. So mm -hmm. uh, companies which want to go there could also be there. And just to uh, butter your argument, uh, scam and things like it, just to have a definition of the scam. Scam is an illegal trick, usually with the purpose of getting money from the people. Whether this electoral bond scheme did that or not is anybody's guess, right? It's illegal, ruled later, but it was devised in such a way that it is illegal by purpose. So the scam is established there. The government is, the, the person who has introduced the scheme is very much a, a kind of a legal luminary, so I was told. So therefore, he knows the ins and outs of the scam to design a law frame like this, which can be challenged in the court later. That's where the scam is. The, the intention or the, you know, uh, what we can say, uh, mens rea was there in the act itself for you to prove. That's it. Uh, Swami Nathan, uh, the total declaration of electoral bonds is how much? 16,000 or 20,000 now? 16,518 crores. Yes, to yeah. So we, we, we are supposed to believe for the past five years, 2018 to 2014, 16,000 crores the electoral of uh, expenses received of all parties. No, this is a small figure. This is much mm -hmm. more. Yeah, yeah. Go, go a very small ji. figure. Gopi ji, what yeah, let me ask one question. Yeah, go ahead. What is disclosed by these electoral bonds is just the 10 percent of the 90 percent black money which political yeah. parties get yeah this is a warning to the citizen these electoral bonds 10 percent is disclosed the 90 percent comes in black money and this is how the democracy which we talk about is manipulated everybody is part of this game political yes. parties are part of the game how many political parties can swear that how much is the minimum expenses required to fight elections? In today, I'm told for parliamentary elections, it is for a candidate is anything like 15 crores or more, 15 crores. Even in Bombay, a municipal corporation seat expenditure is as high as one crore. So it is yeah. for the people to rise and revolt against unnecessary expenses in the elections. So it is this 10% is here. I'm talking about the larger picture. 90% money is in black. And from a corporation seat to an MLA seat to a parliamentary seat, you can imagine what is the money which is involved. And we are all talking about electoral reforms, make uh, some changes, have a revolution. But if everybody is involved across party lines, this is the halat of our uh, electoral system. Uh, one thing that can be done, uh, Jagdish. Yes. Uh, since now you're saying that everybody is involved, then the people should pick on someone who is uh, promised you that he will clean up the system and he is a party to this dirt, then people should first uh, go one step by step. The people who have uh, uh, been making promises that they will uh, clean up the system, they will not let anybody uh, you know, run away with this kind of money. Uh, these, uh, this has to be the if you today say that the parties should revolt, uh, the people should revolt against all parties. This is not a practical proposition. There's no party today which can say that, listen, we are absolutely clean and you give us a chance to uh, to uh, to uh, rule and we will fix all these people. Rather, the best, better way of doing it is to identify three or four people who are principal culprits in this uh, uh, this all this uh, thing that has happened. It's not really happened here. It's happened in B BCCI. It has happened in almost every institution. So you have to cho pick and choose and 
and make those people who are fighting elections, who are responsible for it, in that the premier people should be identified and the public should defeat them. Any anyone uh, wants to comment on that? Yes, you are uh, correctly said that uh, because this system, this electoral bonds has just created a mess for the government. They come out with a new system. There was no need of it, and uh, existing electoral system was fine. They tried to rectify it and messed it up. And they should have at least the election commission of India objected this, Reserve Bank of India objected this, or at least it should have been a debate in the party. And uh, the parties don't uh, have a debate. Some bureaucrat or some corporate guy must have fooled this government. And now, even after the Supreme Court, after the judgment, constitutional then judgment, you are again going to the court with the State Bank of India chairman, poor guy. I have sympathies to State Bank of India chairman for getting royal slap from the Supreme Court. Tomorrow also he is going to get the slap because Chief Justice of India says why you are not giving the donor details, <laughs> linking details. So this is a computer. The, every uh, electoral bond has a number. It, it He has to simply say bond number donor number donor name receiver name and uh, uh, just tally uh, how much is the donor by such and such company how much has gone to this party that party and how, what is the total of all these parties <coughs> these are the world of digitized world even if after that not a digitized world to so 2000 onwards microsoft excel will give you this data so why it happen and BJP is getting all blame for this. Look at the way I have sympathies to BJP. They got only with the entire center and the entire 15, 16 state. They got only 8,000 crore uh, and uh, with the one state Mamta got 13, uh, 1,300 crore and what are they doing? Why they are, uh, well, that's why I say that you, your, part, from your party there is no Debates, nothing is going on. They, they have unnecessarily created this mess and now again creating a mess by going with affidavits by SBI, not opening. Let no, let, 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 one interruption. See, one must understand that this project is a central government project. It is not uh, any of the states have not they have benefited from it, but uh, the, uh, the whole uh, conception was done by the central party, yeah, yeah. in particular the final, then finance minister, and then this was accepted by the prime minister. So therefore, the central party is the one that has to now make amends. Th those who are responsible for putting up this, say, if the prime minister says I was ignorant, I didn't know anything about it, somebody put a uh, piece of paper before me and I signed it, something like that. But then who is that person who did it? At least he should be identified. Just this, this uh, the problem with in all the previous ones, whether it was the uh, whether it was the uh, Bofors thing, whether it was the uh, 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 the uh, what we uh, what we had in the various other, the people were identified, and then they were prosecuted. Here, nobody is getting identified. Who's the, who's done it? That the Supreme, and Supreme Court is chairman is blocked. Uh, yes. If uh, I think as a ruling part, uh, ruler should have asked the SBI chairman, being a government yes. bank chairman, he must have asked the government what to do. You do whatever Supreme Court asked you. Every no, day no. you are getting the, this, is, this is not the first time this kind of uh, this kind of uh, evil uh, method has been chosen. There was a participatory note. There's nothing could be worse than that. Yeah, in fact, this one, participating, nobody gets caught. You see, it comes in through uh, Mauritius and then it goes into the stock market and then yeah. uh, they do everything and then take it away. It's a it's a racket of the first order. It's still on. Uh, How many times have you? No need for no declaration. 
But here they go for 50,000 extra bank will ask, Kadar bank, Father Kanna, they are they, nothing short of asking our horoscope. Yes, so, of so, so, so uh, uh, any other done. You see, uh, 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 we have to be able to focus this uh, whole discussion to ultimately say that the principal um, uh, bearers of the responsibility are so and so. So at some stage, maybe not now because we're running out of time, but we should have another uh, round where we identify who are the people who are principally uh, involved. And I hope that the Supreme Court will produce the documents. Uh, somewhere, somebody would have signed something in the files, and those files should be made available to the public by the Supreme Court. Supreme Court. But Dr. Swami, I think many of our viewers feel that you should lead the filing of the FIR or making a PIL in the Supreme Court for a monitoring of these cases, because I don't think it is going to die down in the Supreme Court, an FIR or a uh, PIL for um, SIT monitoring or the Supreme Court monitoring of these cases like you did in the 2G. Because corruption is corruption unless some people show the way. This will keep on going on and public memory becomes too short. Yeah, so I agree. But uh, I want to wait till the Supreme Court uh, completes the process. Then I think I certainly will sit down with all of you. Uh, the uh, Gobi Krishnan is a, is a well-established, uh, what shall I say? 007. 007 for us. So we'll sit down and we'll do it. But at this stage, uh, we have uh, we'll let the uh, Supreme Court finish his work. And then I think uh, we can go and file a PIL or something like that. And through that, uh, some, uh, uh, some people, uh, you know, create a an agency to prosecute these various people. I agree with you. Arvind? Dr. Swami, in the... No, one second. Dr. Swami, you've heard all of us today. Yes. Can you... in what have, can For the benefit of the viewers, can you brief this in, in Hindi so that there are a lot of Hindi people, uh, viewers are also asking so that they can also benefit from what we've heard so that if we could do that for us, it will be great. Dr. Swami. Well, we'll have a, a, another session for it. Perfect. Uh, okay. Uh, for it. Or, and even in, that, okay. Okay. And I will good. speak only in Hindi so then I and Arvind Chaturvedi can. Uh, Perfect. We'll do that, together. Dr. Swami. Yeah. yeah. Sure. And, and if you don't, do you have anything to say, Dr. Swami, based on what you heard today? Well, I think that uh, probably I've, I've seen so many scandals before, but this is the most sinister one I have seen. It's so sinister that you are actually uh, destroying the uh, system uh, by making all these uh, uh, arrangements. And then through the arrangements, you are collecting the money. Uh, and from whom? From those who are already in the trouble with the law. There are a lot of people who are uh, having, uh, what shall I say, uh, uh, a poor business or negative business. Now, after this, they, the government has given them projects. I'll identify that as soon as I get uh, the full material for the next uh, occasion. But I will wow. tell you this, that here it is not only that some people have give, come and given money, but those who gave the money, they have been rewarded. That part has not yet fully come out. And once it comes out, then you will know what a racket it is. And for there, there it will become much easier to prosecute some people and go or go to court and uh, ask for it. So that's uh, what I would uh, think that you have to wait for, uh, just to see what is the what is the advantage of those who gave money uh, in this into this system into this uh, arrangement. Uh, what did they get out of it? And that should be identified. A lot of people who are blacklisted have got projects from the uh, from the government. How is that possible? So all these have to be clarified. Dr. Swami, I think as you did in the 2G, there is uh, under the Prevention of Corruption Act, even if 
I have been not benefited. If suppose I was a minister and or the prime minister, if I have not benefited, but if I benefited somebody else, is also yes. corruption. If I am not wrong under the Correct. Prevention of Corruption Act, so that also will come into play in this sure. case, perhaps. Sure, sure, absolutely, no question about it. Arvind, and, we uh, can wind up. It's more than an hour. Okay, yes. uh, now uh, uh, before I summarize. Uh, uh, Dr. Swami has made a uh, very important remark that since the judgment is still not out, the Supreme Court hearing is still on, therefore no action can be contemplated at this stage for sure. And uh, the urgency was that whether people should know who is corrupt and whether this practice was being used for corruption for one political party or the other or all, of, all political parties for that matter because everybody has benefited. Nobody is admitting that they have been benefited. Now, the most important thing is that quid pro quo. 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 Quid uh, for, for a minister to make but as I said there are too many things uh, too early and uh, uh, let the things uh, precipitate with more investigation when something comes out certainly as Dr. Swami suggested we will discuss this issue we will discuss this issue once again and uh, uh, we will we'll also find out a solution that how can the solution to the political parties funding or election funding can be found Dinesh Goswami ke time say uh, since uh, late 80s, we have to say that the reform is not going to be reform, kaise ho, but no solution has come out so far in the last 30 or 40 years. And when uh, uh, Arun Jetli Ji made this scheme, he said that this scheme is going to curb the black money uh, being pumped into the elections and political parties. But today, what is happening in the past, this is the first time. कि अरुण जेटली का जो मत था वो सही नहीं था और अनकॉन्स्टिट्यूशनल जो सुप्रीम कोर्ट ने डिक्लेअर कर दिया और कितना कितना सामने आता है इसके बाद हम इस पे दोबारा चर्चा करेंगे धन्यवाद गोपी कृष्णन आप हमारे कार्यक्रम में बहुत दिन के बाद आए हैं एंड फैक्ट वी वर थिंकिंग ऑन सो मेनी इश्यूज यू कैन पार्टिसिपेट जगदीश जस्ट नाउ डिस्क्राइबड यू एज़ 007 I call you Encyclopedia of Indian Politics. And uh, being here in this program, it adds to our value. Thank you very much, Gopi, for joining us. Uh, Swami Nathan gave such a good analysis today uh, and uh, through the, the presentation. Thank you, Swami Nathan, for analyzing this whole uh, uh, black episode of uh, electoral bond. Dr. Swami, as usual, uh, he's the guide, mentor, and uh, uh, gives direction to the VHS and all such issues. Thank you, Dr. Swami, for being with us on this program and suggesting us what next to be done. Thanks, Jagdish. Thanks, Ramesh Swami and the technical team led by Ashish Shetty, Gadgi Rakesh, Ishwar Ayer, Swami Nathan, Tejas Naval Gul, Vishal Mehta, and Najesh Naya. Next Sunday, we'll be coming up with another topic. Maybe by that time, some more discussion uh, would have, some more uh, uh, information would have come out on this uh, uh, electoral bond also after tomorrow's hearing in Supreme Court. Thank you very much. We'll be meeting next Sunday. Till then, Namaskar. Jai. Yeah.